Like informal settlements in cities across Africa, Mukuru in Nairobi, Kenya, is vulnerable to climate hazards like extreme rainfall, floods, water and vector-borne diseases, extreme heat, fires, and water scarcity. This is due to its precarious location, poor infrastructure, and high levels of poverty. Residents also have little say in decision-making processes. As a result, Mukuru lacks infrastructure and resources to deal with climate-related risks. Starting in 2017, the residents of Mukuru and the Nairobi city government undertook a groundbreaking upgrading process known as the Mukuru Special Planning Area, or SBA. And they do implement the exercise uko juu. Lakini uko chini, hawafiki mibu yao uko. Because kwa mfano, wakua na mfuwa mingi. Sasa, hiyo kitu inakuja, inayangia ndani ya mwenye baza watu, inaumiza. After that, mayo mapandrigo tena inalete kitu inaitua diorea, kitu ngini inaitua rimonia, kitu ngini inaitua ETC. Hata hivyo, hii ni semuzuri ya kuhishi mbinadamu. Kama inaweza fanyua eh, planning, hiyo planning. Vile hiyo gina itua, special planning area. So hiyo kane haji, hiyo kitu ingie katika vijiji isi zengine sabu. Hata madhare, korogosho, mbukibera, semu zote mahali pako kijiji, inaenda wrong side of the river. Uwezi ona kijiji katika TV, hivi bila kuona mto. You must see a river and then you see a slums area. You are not a moja. River and slums. They are partner. They are, they are friends. Across Africa, climate resilience in informal settlements requires urgent attention. Locally led planning efforts under the SPA have addressed existing gaps in service provision. These investments have reduced residents' climate vulnerability. The SPA serves as an important model for upgrading at scale to build climate resilience in informal settlements. Upgrading is the practice of improving land tenure, housing, and basic infrastructure and services. Historically, upgrading has focused on social and economic vulnerabilities, while climate adaptation has focused on environmental ones. The complex environments in informal settlements require that adaptation look beyond hazards to consider root causes of risk and vulnerability. Adaptation must address socio-economic resilience to protect residents against climate-related stresses, hazards, and shocks. In turn, upgrading initiatives must increasingly address current and future environmental risks. Inherent to resilience, adaptation efforts must recognize the crucial role of social processes to build local capacities and co-produce upgrading plans with local governments. Upgrading as a purely technocratic process to install infrastructure will fail to build resilience, instead leaving in place the political and institutional marginalization that reproduce climate vulnerabilities. While upgrading is yet to be mainstreamed as climate adaptation, it's a widely accepted practice in urban governance. It holds promise for greatly increasing resilience to climate change impacts in informal settlements across Africa. In Mukuru, planning focused on current risks. Addressing gaps in infrastructure and services is the first, most urgent step in upgrading informal settlements for climate resilience. While the SPA did not use the language of climate adaptation, it nevertheless created a framework for multi-sectoral planning at scale. It built residents' socio-economic and environmental resilience by putting communities at the center of every step in the planning process. So I've refused to separate the two. I've considered that any planning today is towards issues of climate resilience. And the more we discuss and reflect around it, the better so that we are able to innovate or bring out ways in which then that planning addresses the issues of climate resilience. So settlement upgrading is a climate adaptation strategy. A bit again about that, climate conversation is the integrative nature of it how multi-sectoral in nature it is, especially in the urban context, you can't separate it. Climate change and its impacts are not always well understood by informal settlement residents or local professionals. Upgrading, on the other hand, is a widely accepted practice. 
A practical language has grown with it that is well understood by communities and professionals alike. Instead of communities and local professionals learning to speak in the language of international organizations, funders and partners should instead learn how existing upgrading practices aid adaptation and resilience. And, as upgrading evolves to be more sensitive to climate change, residents and local governments can also learn more about related risks and begin to speak the language of funders and partners. Through community-led data collection and co-planning activities, Mukuru residents created risk profiles. Their research focused on everyday risks. Like the factors in climate resilience, these risks are not only environmental, but also economic, political, and social. Through the process, residents determined collective priorities for addressing their most pressing risks. In keeping with the SPA's principle of putting communities at the center of planning, it met people where they were, asking questions using language and examples drawn from residents' experiences. Uh, views at the frontline tool was uh, was used to prepare the community, start identifying the, the, their challenges before the consultations happened. So it was one way of engaging the community and trying to 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 understand the threats they perceive of them as the highest. Uh, so they're able to, to list all the threats they have, then they're able to rank them according to the highest to the up to the lowest. Then after that, they're able also to come up with solutions to, to all those threats. So it's one way of preparing the community and uh, trying to help them understand and come up with those threats and also start those discussion on how they, they foresee those uh, threats how those things can be, can be solved. In Mukuru, early implementation efforts have already reduced climate vulnerabilities in several locations. Investments include paved roads with storm drains, trunk sewers and last mile simplified sewer systems, in plot toilets, boreholes and water ATMs, as well as social infrastructure like hospitals and schools. Kwanga na shida tu kabisa shida ya cho 24/7 ime block. Lakini tangu watu tengeneze wa kujua waka, wakaeka wakafanya upaipu wakaeka hizo pipes wakatukonekte wakat cho zetu kwa siwa sahi sasa ina flow vizuri. Maji ikaingilia. Tulikuwa tunangaika kwa plot tunambiwa tununue maji ya kuflash cho Yani kumuaga wakati imechafuliwa kabisa wakati block. Lakini sahi maji hiko, tunatumia hiyo maji. At least environment yetu sahi hiko sawa. Plot na hapo nje kuko sawa. Kitu ya pili, huko nyuma huko, huko mosque zone. Watu nyo walikuwa naka huko kitambo walikuwa na jove nyo kulikuwa kunaka. Aki huko ugonjwa, hizi mawata bondi sisa hizi zili kuanga zimeja hivi. Watu walikuwa na shinda kama mimi, ata nilikuwa ni meogopa kukunywa maji ya huku juu. Nilikuwa na onanga ni kama maji ya Nairobi tu ni sewage. Ningetumia hiyo maji tumbo inauma watoto kwa plot ndi hawa wanaendesha nini lakini saa hii hiyo magonjwa imepungua kabisa Maji iko na environment ni safi hakuna harufu mbaya saa hii watu wako sawa The Mukuru SPA demonstrates the crucial roles of community government partnerships and community ownership in planning and decision making processes They are indispensable for creating locally appropriate and enduring investments that improve climate resilience in informal settlements. Risk management and vulnerability reduction should not be restricted to climate and disaster risk management, but instead mainstreamed into urban development processes. In the context of rapid urbanization and the growing frequency and intensity of climate hazards, it is increasingly important to assess and anticipate future risks. However, it's important to weigh future risks against immediate risks. Funding for upgrading is limited and political will is challenging to build and maintain. Start by addressing the immediate needs of residents over uncertain future risks. In many cases, these initial investments in both infrastructure and community leadership will support additional efforts to address future risks. <laughs>